may be too tall for this. Can you hear me? Everybody in here? Okay, good. So I, when, when Tony asked me to speak tonight, I figured, you know, that's probably one of the easiest things anyone could possibly do. If I simply read Tony's Wikipedia page, it would take more than my allotted time, um, in which case you would know everything about him. So rather than take the easy way out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it harder on myself by stealing the headlines really quickly, some of which you've already heard already. Um, at the age of 32, Tony was hired as a consultant at Apple on a special project. That special project became the iPod, which launched Apple in a completely new direction beyond being simply a personal computer manufacturer and into being a world-leading consumer electronics company. From there, he went on to be head of engineering for the iPhone. Who has an iPhone? <laughs> you and 700 million other people have an iPhone. Um, it's generated over $200 billion in revenues for Apple and catapulted Apple to the highest market cap company in the world. And what I would argue for many, many, many years into the future will be the biggest turnaround in the history of business worldwide ever, period. Um, many people would stop at that point, maybe take it easy. We use the phrase internally at Benchmark, he might have become post-economic. Um, <laughs> But, but Tony had an itch that he hadn't scratched yet. And so um, he left Apple, which was fairly courageous on its own, uh, and started Nest, which obviously redefined two more categories um, and led to an acquisition from Google, one of their largest ever, for over $3 billion. There are those that speculate, and I can't prove this to be true, that part of the acquisition was solely to keep Tony from going back to Apple. <laughs> So with the headlines gone, let me dig a little deeper and tell you about the person I know and what I think separates him from other people. The first I would say, and this will come as no surprise, he's remarkable, entre remarkably entrepreneurial. He um, started his first company in high school, two in college. Uh, and then he took three different paths that you may not know that precede the 32-year-old consultant um, that were with companies that aren't everyday names. The first was with General Magic, which Forbes respond, re or describes as the most important dead company in the history of Silicon Valley. Um, next, he took a job at Phillips, uh, which no one would think of as, a, as the place that you would want to build your career in Silicon Valley. No offense. Um, and, and the third was a startup called Fuse that I would suspect no one in the room knows much about. Um, I would argue, you know, from my experience in dealing with entrepreneurs, that learning through adversity and perhaps not achieving all your goals you want can have a more profound impact um, than joining a company that just works out of the gate. We use a phrase internally that good judgment comes from experience that comes from bad judgment. <laughs> and I think the lessons that you learn in terms of just the school of hard knocks, the humility that comes along with it, and the drive that you're then ingrained with to succeed um, are remarkably important. There's another quote that I think puts this in perspective. Bill Gates said many years ago, he said, success is a lousy teacher. It seduces smart people into thinking they can't lose. Um, and I think it's much more interesting to get the hard knocks out of the way early so you can succeed later than to do that in reverse, which I've seen, by the way. Um, in, addition, in addition to being entrepreneurial, um, Tony's remarkably courageous. Um, I talked to one person that worked with him at one of his many successes, and he said, looking back on my career, the work that I did for Tony was the toughest, most backbreaking work I've ever done, but it was also the most rewarding work because Tony held us to standards that we would never have dreamt possible. And I've seen this in some of the best entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. You hold people accountable to design goals, ship dates, biz dev deals that no one else thought could be done. And this is rarefied air. I think this is the best of the best that do this. Um, as a result, you end up in places that you, no one else would have thought you could achieve. Another story on courage and bravery, I can tell you, because I think the statute of limitations have run out. There were many nights, um, Friday or Saturday nights, where my wife and, and I were out for dinner with Tony and his wife, say 10, 10.30, second bottle of wine. And his iPhone would light up with this guy named Steve. And I can tell you now after the fact that Tony had the courage to reach over and hit the decline button. <laughs> um, 
Um, the, the third thing I'd tell you about Tony, which I personally believe is the defining characteristic of the best and the brightest in Silicon Valley, Tony is remarkably curious. He's a learn-it-all. He reads more than you do. He studies more than you do. He dissects a lot electronics like eighth graders dissect frogs um, on his spare time. Uh, a few years back, I was on the East Coast. It was about 7 in the morning, and I went on Twitter, and Tony was posting like three or four articles on a broad array of subjects that no, I wouldn't even imagine he would read about. And there's two things that I took away from this. One, he didn't understand Twitter because you should never tweet when other people aren't awake. Um, <laughs> But the second was that Tony was up at 4 a.m. reading articles, um, which I think he is most days. Um, he, he probably knows more about a wide variety of subjects than most people in this room. Um, and it's not solely because he might be smarter, which he truly might be, but it's because he works harder at it. And I think, he, I think that's tremendously important. Now, two, things, two other things I would tell you about Tony that, that I don't think impact his success but help define who he is. One, Tony really enjoys life. Um, I, I guarantee you he has more electronica music on his iPhone than anyone in this room. His collection of sneakers, which he, he didn't lead me, da lead me down, he brought another one, is probably deeper than anyone you've ever met. Um, and he simply loves to have fun, whether it's skiing or dancing or attending an NBA final game if that opportunity presents itself. Um, a few years ago, we were both oddly enough, in Reno at a Stevie Wonder concert. And about halfway through the show, Tony pops up out of his chair and runs to the front of the stage in the aisle and starts dancing. Now, you can imagine yourself at many concerts wondering who that lunatic is that jumps up and runs down to the front of the stage. It's Tony Fidel. <laughs> and I, I, I would, I, I might, use the reference of Elaine from Seinfeld, not that he dances that poorly, but he does dance with that same amount of conviction. <laughs> the, the last thing I'd tell you about Tony is he has a big heart. Uh, a few years ago, my wife and I were, were lucky enough to be invited to his 40th birthday party, and the thing that struck me the most is there were just as many people there from General Magic, um, from Philips, as there was from Apple. And there's a lot of people in this community that when they start climbing the ladder, they forget about the rungs below them. And I think it says a lot about Tony, he's not that way. Whether it's someone that he worked with 20 years ago or a new entrepreneur, he's made 200 angel investments, by the way, that just wants to learn, he always has time. And I think it's these last two characteristics um, of having a big heart and knowing how to have fun that in my mind truly define Tony. So without further ado, I, I have the, uh, pleasure of introducing the father of the iPod, the head of engineering for the iPhone, the CEO of Nest, and for those that care, a graduate of the University of Michigan, go blue, Tony Fidel. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really honored to be here. Um, thank you very much to Silicon Valley Forum. And thank you very much to Kevin for, for your outreach, for you know, our friendship since General Magic Days, and to you know, end this honor. So thank you very much. So Bill, you should have been up here. You should be up here as part of one of these visionaries. He is a tremendous friend, but he's also one of the best uh, uh, finders of entrepreneurs in the Valley. So one day, I hope I'll be giving you an introduction here. Thank you. Bill. So this, is, this award is something very meaningful to me. It's something I hold near and dear because it's about the community. You know, each day, and you, you've heard about the different things I've done, you, know, we're, you see all the magazines and websites, and you're on different you know, top 10 lists or top 100 lists or whatever it, whatever it is. But you know, that's really about them selling you know, their media. But when you actually get an award from your community, from the people, I've been here now 25 years, to get it from the community of my peers and the people that I so love, that is what's special to me, much more than any of those lists or any of those other things. So thank you. Some of the most talented people come to Silicon Valley to join us to change the world. 
I remember 25 years ago when I came, getting uh, you know, in my car, pulling out of the driveway from my parents' house after the University of Michigan. And my parents, my mom was crying, going, why are you going to this company called General Magic? What is General Magic? I'm like, and I told her, she didn't understand. There was only about 25 people at the company back then. Bud, Bud remembers, he was part of that. And she said, why can't you just go work for a nice company like IBM? You know, something we know about. I'm like, mom, you don't understand. These are my heroes. These are the, my heroes, I've been reading about them. They created the Macintosh. I have to go and learn from them. I have to go work with my heroes and know what it is and how they do what they do. Because when we were doing uh, you know, startups in Michigan, there was, there was no internet back then. There was no knowledge of how you build a company or build a great product. You had to come to the heart of where the world was changing so quickly. And that was right here. And it continues to be here. The people here are the ones who know how tough it is to succeed here. You're the ones who've been trying and failing and trying over and over again, much longer than I have. I had no idea what I was doing when I came out here. I just knew I wanted to. I saw the innovation. General Magic didn't make, end up making a success, as we heard from Bill. It's probably the, the most important company to actually die. But what I did gain from General Magic was a real sense of this community and what it means to be a part of it and how we work together, generations helping other generations. In fact, in my first 10 years, as Bill mentioned, there were a lot of failures. The successes were not didn't come for at least 10 to 12 years later. Even at the early days when I was at Apple, we were struggling. The iPod didn't take off the first year. It didn't take off the second year. It was the third year. We weren't getting bonuses. We weren't getting all those accolades. Looking back now, you know, we have revisionist history. But then, to take a chance to go to a company with 1% market share only in the US. Everyone's like, let's, Close the doors, right? It was about the community saying, no, something special is happening. Go there. Just like something special is happening at General Magic or the other startups all around here. It's because we have the pulse. We know because we talk. We communicate with one another and understand these things. And it was also the community that when I was down and out and the chips were, were, were gone, that picked you up and said, let's go for it again, try again. I've been to many places around the world and there's nothing like this unique community. That's what makes this place very special. And that's why so many visionaries come out of this, this community, is because of how special it is. For we get our first time at bat and we strike out, we get another one and another one. And sooner or later, if you hang in there long enough, and you keep learning, you actually have success, whatever that may be. It doesn't always have to be a, you know, a hundred million or billion dollar company. It's whatever and however you define your success. Early in my career, I had a chance to go build a new division of another company in another city. I went and tried it for four weeks. And I couldn't believe how different it was. And I came running back to Silicon Valley. I couldn't, I was just like, what am I doing? This is the wrong place. It's the wrong, I need to be back at the center of anything. And you know what, even with the internet today, that still is true. It's nothing, you don't get these kinds of events where you can learn and you can share and you can grow. Now, it's our turn, my turn, to pass it on to the next generations, just like it was passed to me when I was 21 and 22, working with my heroes. I've tried to mentor my teams over the year, 
and the companies that I've worked for, to give someone else the chance that someone gave me. Because it's the thing about experience that builds on itself. You learn from people, add your own piece, and pass it on. In fact, today, we have multiple children who were born at General Magic, now working at Nest. And I'm not kidding, and it's wonderful to see. And we actually have their parents coming and either consulting or working with us. So this is a community that passes our craft down, and we have to continue to do that, wherever that may be. And so I'm so happy to get this award because it's really about not just me, but it's the community that helped me be the person I am today. So again, thank you very much. I appreciate everything and all the con connections and, every, and all the, uh, the support you've given me over the years, and I look forward to giving it back in the, in the decades to come. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you.